Уважаемые участники, мы готовы начинать пленарную сессию. Прошу вас занимать свои места. Esteemed participants, you are kindly requested to take your seats. The plenary session will start in a few minutes. Уважаемые участники, через несколько минут мы начинаем. Прошу вас занимать свои места. The participants, you are kindly requested to take your seats. We are starting any time from now.
Уважаемые участники, через минуту начинаем. Прошу вас занимать свои места. Dear participants, please take your seats. The conference plenary session will start in one minute. уже никогда не будет прежним. Столкнувшись с глобальной угрозой, 
never be the same as the global trend. We have survived the, the hardest uh, crisis in history. The industry is abiding by the new rules, and these rules provide for the successful development. The events uh, of the fishery forum will provide answers to the new challenges that the fishery is uh, facing as well as the aquaculture, which is the leader in producing fish uh, products in globally and in Russia. It is important to understand how the products uh, make it to the consumers, uh, what's happening at the logistics chain. A special discussion is devoted to the consumer market and uh, how to make the fish products uh, popular among the younger generations as well. Talking about the youth, we should uh, say that uh, the, what the fishery industry could provide as an employer. It is necessary to bring in uh, talent, to attract uh, talent uh, into the industry and science. These and uh, the other issues uh, will be discussed uh, at uh, the business program of the Fishery Forum. Welcome to the uh, fourth uh, Global Fishery Forum. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am happy to welcome you to the fourth uh, Global Fishery Forum and the uh, Seafood uh, Expo. I am glad that uh, you have joined us. I hope that the discussion will be both interesting and fruitful, and I would like uh, to invite the participants. Uh, Mr. Tsibulski, the governor of Arkhangelsk region. Mr. Kamil Darix, uh, development director of the MSC. Vladimir Rachmanin, assistant uh, director general and regional representative for Europe and Central Asia, UNFAO. Mr. Alexei Buglak, uh, president, Pollock Catchers Association. Andrei Yatskin, Deputy, first Deputy Chairman of the Federation Council. Mr. Shestakov, uh, Federal Agency for Fisheries. Mr. Jacob uh, Vestergaard, Minister of Fisheries of the Faroe Islands. And Kjell Ingebrigtsen. I apologize uh, for uh, my pronunciation of the Norwegian name, Chairman of the Norwegian Fishermen Association. And today, we will have uh, Ms. Rechkina, the first uh, deputy president of the Rosselhaus Bank. Okay, a few words uh, on the procedure of the day. If you feel like uh, talking from where you sit, you can do that, or you can use the rostrum. And I would like to give the floor to uh, the Minister of uh, Agriculture of the Russian Federation, Mr. Patrushev, uh, for uh, you to give us uh, the general picture of what the fishery industry is facing in the year of the pandemic. Esteemed uh, colleagues, dear participants of the plenary session, good afternoon to you. Allow me once again to welcome you to the fourth Global Fishery Forum today. We will uh, discuss the most burning issues of the development of the fishery industry, which uh, indeed is a part of the global market. And uh, this uh, industry plays an important uh, role in the social and the economic system of uh, the countries. Uh, however, the pandemic has shown it once again that uh, food security is uh, are very important and uh, one should take care of it in the day-to-day -day activity. And it's not only important uh, for the individual countries, but uh, globally. What is important is that the Russian uh, fisheries industry is uh, operating smoothly in, under the new condition and uh, there is a stability. Uh, and uh, it is uh, underpinned by uh, the uh, 
uh, special measures uh, taken. There is a special quarantine lockdown measures introduced uh, for the uh, seafaring uh, personnel. Uh, there is uh, a growth uh, a rate of 14% uh, of the aqua uh, culture, and it was uh, exceeded the 500,000 tons. And uh, we expect uh, that uh, uh, the uh, water bioresources uh, will be growing. As far as the fish processing is uh, concerned, the uh, sector has uh, re retained the trends uh, for growth uh, thanks to the commissioning of the new capacity. In the past three years, uh, there are 20 onshore facilities has been commissioned, and six of these are large uh, scales with uh, the volume of processing of more than 1,000 tons. There are uh, new uh, vessels that have been commissioned uh, that uh, process uh, fish uh, at uh, sea. We have uh, increased their supplies by 300,000 uh, tons. Uh, however, there were restrictions and uh, limitations imposed uh, by China, and we started looking for new markets, and uh, the food, uh, uh, the products were channeled to South Korea and the other countries of the Southeast Asia. Food and the food products uh, are supplied to Mauritania and New Zealand. At the same time, we maintain dialogue with our Chinese partners. The Russian uh, partners uh, provided uh, new measures uh, to reduce the risk of coronavirus. As far as the expansion of the geography of export is concerned, in the past four years we have opened 20 new markets uh, for 23 new products and uh, we will continue with uh, these uh, efforts. I would like to draw your attention to improvement of the state support. Next year, the fishermen that uh, are uh, engaging their activity in the remote areas will be provided subsidies for fuel. There are changes to be introduced into the tax code to provide incentives uh, for high value uh, products. Subsidies will be provided uh, for haulage of the uh, products uh, from the Far East uh, regions. The projects uh, are supported at the special economic zones of the accelerated development. Last week, President of the Russian Federation at uh, the Eastern Economic Forum has declared about uh, the incentive provided in the Kuril Islands. And I'm sure Mr. Shestakov will give you more details about that. The pandemic has uh, tested uh, the sustainable economic uh, structures and uh, it uh, emphasized the importance of the sustainable production and uh, the fishery industry is no exception. Our main benchmarks uh, are first, of course, uh, is uh, rejuvenating and uh, uh, introducing new uh, capacity for new jobs, uh, which uh, will improve the quality of life uh, in the region. Uh, those regions uh, where uh, the fishery industry facilities are dominated. It is important to provide incentives for investments. At uh, present, there are five vessels built as a result of the investment quotas. 33 more are coming. Altogether, 40% of the vessels in the Far East will be upgraded and 80% in the North. Another important issue is environment, sustainable environment and aquaculture development. The potential for aquaculture is quite high in Russia. Even uh, today, a number of uh, the enterprises uh, meet uh, the standards. Uh, however, many enterprises uh, operate in an obsolete way. And uh, colleagues, I would like uh, to draw your attention to shift to the new technologies. And the Ministry of Agriculture will give you all the necessary support. Priority number three is the development of the industry science. And it is very important because of the climate agenda. Last year, the R&D and the scientific enterprises have 
conducted 900 expeditions uh, to study habitats. Uh, 22 will have more uh, surveys. We expect that the outputs, outcomes of these surveys, together with the, the scientific uh, community, will uh, study the climate change uh, on uh, the populations uh, to and uh, develop the measures uh, to mitigate uh, the regulations both domestically and uh, globally. The uh, colleagues uh, today, the fishery industry, is uh, developing along the lines of the global trends. However, the pandemic is uh, introducing a lot of changes, uh, disrupting the chain of custody, and uh, our task uh, to adopt uh, to the new conditions and to strengthen the fishery industry. To do that, uh, we will provide investment incentives for the investments and uh, provide the state support. We are, uh, count uh, on uh, the further dialogue uh, with uh, the fishing uh, community. And uh, this uh, forum is a nice venue to exchange opinions, uh, ideas, and technologies. Dear friends, I wish you fruitful work and uh, mutually beneficial contracts. Thank you. Thank you, Dmitry. And uh, let's uh, refer it uh, to the uh, our legislators, and uh, we have a representative of the Federation Council, and uh, we uh, had uh, challenges disclosed, but uh, new markets and new prospects. Uh, what support uh, do you think should be given to the fishery industry for it to bounce back after the pandemic? Uh, thank uh, you, and uh, to be held responsible for all the legislators, I have taken my floor at the rostrum. Before answering the question, I would like uh, to uh, make my statement, and uh, I have already stated my uh, opinion at the opening, and uh, what I saw at the egg expo is very encouraging, and it stands uh, to reason that uh, we are having it because the uh, Russian authorities uh, have undertaken measures uh, to make the fishery industry stronger. I would like to thank the organizers for the opportunity to have uh, my talk at the forum. This uh, venue is uh, quite authoritative. Uh, it has gained uh, prominence among the fishing community. And uh, I am sure that pretty soon we will have an anniversary uh, forum and uh, we will be making conclusions and it will be very encouraging and exciting for the industry. Taking into account uh, the bio uh, uh, marine resources, uh, Russia is one of the largest producers and suppliers of the fish uh, products. As uh, it was no noted by the Council of the Federation, the effects of the activity is food security, the development of the export uh, poten potential and the regional development. All these uh, things uh, make it uh, possible to make the fish products accessible, improving the quality of life. The Minister of the Fishery Industry has stated already that uh, the industry is demonstrating good dynamics against all the indicators and uh, the stressed test of the pandemic was uh, successful. And it is uh, clear that uh, the value chains and the supply chains, the chains of uh, custody are being recovered. And uh, we got together not only to talk about the success, but to talk about the issues, challenges. Then the, the, there are new challenges, uh, both uh, domestically and uh, globally. And uh, of course, uh, the competition is growing at uh, the international market. At that, the priorities uh, is uh, to upscale the industry, to uh, improve uh, uh, the R&D potential, the upgrade of the fleet and uh, equipment and the Federation Council, the State Duma uh, take these uh, 
challenges into account uh, and uh, we respond uh, to uh, the requests uh, that are forwarded uh, from the regions. We have received uh, Murmansk and Arkhangelsk uh, catchers associations and uh, they requested the special law to be enacted that would enable to process uh, the fish uh, at sea. And uh, there is a law 338 that was uh, enacted and uh, the Federation Council provides uh, support to all the measures uh, to replenish uh, the fleet uh, with mid and uh, large uh, tonnage uh, ships and uh, the expo at uh, the uh, venue has got the products uh, produced uh, now. We uh, monitor the investments uh, to replenish the fleets and uh, the investments exceed 200 billion rubles. The issues of the development of the fishery industry are discussed uh, at the ch joint uh, chambers uh, together with the government, uh, Premier Mishustin, at, uh, with the, the Minister of the Fishery, uh, joint the legislators to discuss it. The senators are visiting the uh, fishing uh, industry facility and uh, the representatives of the legislators can share their ideas about those uh, uh, visits. Uh, and uh, I would like uh, to emphasize uh, the importance of international uh, cooperation to prevent uh, the so-called uh, IUU uh, and uh, the Council of Federation is, uh, includes uh, this issue of IUU into the agenda of the Federation Council. And, uh, we are inviting the international community for discussion and uh, we are ready to uh, support uh, the measures uh, to prevent, to put a stop to the IUU uh, uh, globally. And the uh, Russian Federation is uh, taking part uh, in uh, the uh, international regulations. Uh, we have uh, made our contribution into the agreement uh, of IUU in the central part of the North uh, Ocean and uh, the uh, Russia has uh, uh, defended the role of the coastal states uh, of, of for the diversity and uh, our colleagues uh, from uh, the US, uh, Canada, the EU uh, supported the idea put forward by Russia. There is another idea on the protection uh, framework uh, of the states uh, that uh, make use uh, the flag of uh, convenience and uh, held them liable for the IUU. And uh, this particular issue will be discussed uh, in uh, the Senate, in the Federation Council. It is important uh, to increase the culture of cooperation for uh, utilizing the resources, uh, uh, the unfair competition and violation of the unsustainable development uh, should be prevented. And uh, both uh, the executive authorities and the legislators uh, will undertake uh, measures uh, to promote this approach uh, along the interparliamentary channels. Through joint uh, concerted efforts, uh, we will make our contribution to address uh, the challenges, and uh, I am sure the current discussion will contribute to that. And uh, I wish uh, success uh, to the work of the forum. Thank you, Andre. Before giving floor to Ilya Vladimirovich, I would like uh, to thank uh, the Ministry of Fish, the Federal Agency for Fisheries, for organizing the Fishery Forum. It is an indication that uh, we are getting back uh, to the normal life. But what uh, will be new normalcy? Because uh, 
we have heard about the new initiatives uh, like uh, Federal Law 338, which uh, provides uh, for the uh, processing at sea. But uh, the others are saying that uh, onshore processing is more important. There are tax breaks in the Kuril Islands. Many of the industry are just uh, asking, where should the investments be made into? So could you please enlighten us on it? Uh, good afternoon, dear colleagues. Tas, it's a very good uh, question. And um, it is quite characteristic of uh, our internal activity. And uh, at the Eastern Economic Forum, we have been discussing it. And uh, we've come to an important conclusion that we have to invest uh, into the sea and into the uh, coast as well. But we have to strike uh, a balance there. And in general, I can say that uh, the fishery industry in Russia is um, changing drastically. And it allowed us to be ready for the challenges that uh, the pandemic has brought about. And uh, if um, it uh, came two years um, after that, we would not be experiencing any difficulties at all. But we had to face some restrictions that were introduced by our partners in terms of logistics, but uh, we managed to um, survive this period, though we faced uh, some um, difficulties, but we shifted part of the cargo to Korea and we opened a new market for our products and uh, the plants that uh, uh, have been already built um, in line with the quarter system, it um, enabled us to uh, manufacture the end products for primary markets and the closure of China has uh, become an ideal for us, but one of the representatives of the fishery industry said that uh, uh, without this uh, ordeal, we would not be able to understand the importance of the quarters. Uh, but opening my speech, I'd like to say a few words about the global markets, what happened under the conditions of a pandemic. If we talk about the global trends of um, the last year, the COVID pandemic led to uh, supply disruptions and the decrease in the uh, fishery outputs. Uh, um, according to FAO, the production of aquaculture has decreased for the first time and the structure of consumption has changed uh, and uh, a demand for uh, fresh uh, products and uh, frozen uh, products has decreased and uh, the drop uh, has amounted almost to 90% according to some uh, estimates and uh, there was a transformation of uh, uh, supplies and uh, lawn uh, storage uh, products were in higher demands and uh, uh, consumers uh, during their isolation and quarantine uh, cooked their meals at um, home and uh, uh, fishermen had to work for uh, the um, uh, storage facilities and new trade ties have been established for almost all trade categories and another aspect is also important uh, the um, safety measures what I've mentioned uh, in China in the largest ports uh, their contacts, home in contacts with the products uh, have been minimized and uh, uh, the demand has grown for refrigerator uh, containers, it has uh, grown uh, by 4 to 5 percent uh, in the upcoming uh, years, um, the, um, the transportation of perishable uh, goods will be um, uh, done in uh, specific containers, and we do understand that uh, um, the um, uh, shipping uh, will be uh, decreasing. And in this regard, for us, for the Russian Federation, it is important uh, to build a new infrastructure facilities, uh, to build uh, and to construct uh, new refrigerator containers, and uh, to um, uh, increase the volume of container production. The decrease of export to China led uh, to the drop of 14% uh, in the output of Pollock in uh, Russia, and we can estimate uh, uh, this um, uh, number in different uh, ways, and we hope that we will be able to catch up with the uh, uh, former uh, figures, but uh, we do see the decrease in the profit for enterprises. 
uh, taken into consideration um, the uh, successful output uh, in uh, salmon, about 5 uh, million tons, so will be a court. So the year is not over yet in the Far East, but our task uh, um, is to come to 5.4 million tons by 2030 and uh, Mr. Rahmanin probably will mention that um, according to the estimate of FAO uh, we will have uh, the uh, largest uh, increase of uh, GDP uh, in uh, this uh, category but uh, these uh, estimates are provided based on the reforms that are undertaken and also the vessels that will be um, put to sea in future and uh, we are gradually um, diversifying our supplies and um, the example of uh, the exports to Japan has grown two times, 12% uh, uh, to the Netherlands and uh, uh, 22 tons from zero to Nigeria. We are opening new markets uh, this uh, year among exporters we uh, have uh, India and in uh, Ghana. Panama and a number of other uh, states. We can't say about large volumes of uh, supply. It's too early to do that, but uh, it means that we are expanding the geography of our supply. We have been talking about it for a very long period of time. We are diversifying the market. I'd like to emphasize uh, the Pollock crisis. It confirmed the necessity uh, to speed up the processing on the territory of the Russian Federation. We do understand it. So we have uh, to meet the the domestic demand and we have to adopt a more flexible approach um, on the global market and the main task the main goal under the conditions of pandemic here for us is the following when we experience this uh, crisis uh, we have to adjust uh, rapidly with the different categories of products it does not mean that we will build uh, the f uh, fish processing uh, capacities and uh, we will be producing a fillet um, during the next uh, 20 years we will have to have uh, the opportunity uh, to manufacture um, different other uh, types probably we will shift uh, to some other processed uh, goods but it will be very important and to have uh, uh, this flexibility without it, it will be quite difficult. And after we implement all these projects, we um, have estimated it uh, and 3.3 um, 3 million tons will be processed and we plan that by uh, 2030 we will be able to uh, increase uh, the processing from 25% to 80%. Uh, to uh, give uh, an impetus to the infrastructure development, what has been already mentioned, we uh, plan to distribute 20% uh, of uh, investment quarters in the Far East in the upcoming years, and it is uh, quite clear that uh, it will uh, we will provide uh, more details after the discussions with the businesses in Russia. Uh, the main uh, manufacturing and production um, I encountered for by uh, medium-sized and large companies, but uh, a small fishery is also very important we have to pay special attention to it the mechanism of the uh, replenishment uh, of um, uh, low and medium uh, tonnage vessels uh, has been uh, introduced and uh, at some uh, quarter free facilities and we are compensating and reimbursing 30% uh, of uh, the vessels that have been built we will uh, um, evaluate how efficient these measures are but uh, our goal is uh, to uh, use the rest all the resources of the seas, uh, we primarily talk about the northern basin, about uh, the um, um, Far East, but we should not forget about the Baltic Sea, the Caspian Sea, the Black Sea. Probably the fishery is not so large scale, but it has very important social and economic importance. Uh, and the replenishment uh, of uh, the facilities is to ensure the economic efficiency and its uh, increase, uh, but it will also help us uh, uh, to ensure the sustainable fishery and also strengthen the position of uh, fishery of the Russian Federation in global context. It's quite uh, relevant and uh, uh, during the last year, uh, it has become an um, engine of uh, influence in uh, the global agenda, and we have to take that uh, into account when we talk about new projects and are working them out. 
during the last years we have uh, had a new uh, successful global partnership in the new resources and new research and uh, we would like to uh, suggest that we should uh, move forward in this direction and we uh, have uh, to uh, ensure our efficient cooperation at all the levels besides the development of the processing and ensuring the efficiency of the fishery um, complex we um, um, have a look at uh, um, expanding the geography of uh, fisheries and one of the main challenges is um, the um, uh, krill uh, catch development and also uh, aquaculture uh, development and uh, uh, here we have a um, huge potential to be unlocked uh, uh, for growth and we know that aquaculture production around the world uh, um, is uh, more than the wild catch figures in Russia it is still quite low and also innovations into biotechnologies we have uh, uh, to move uh, further we have to fully process all the productions and uh, to come to the end products Though the influence of the pandemic is still here, it is not over, but we uh, support the opinions of uh, those experts that the market will um, recover gradually and uh, the demand for fish will be supported by the growth of uh, the population and uh, healthy uh, diets and uh, challenges uh, um, that were brought about by the COVID and uh, the disruption in supply led to the perception of uh, uh, fish uh, as a valuable product and the source of protein and this trend will still be preserved. I'd like to emphasize that uh, uh, fish farming, um, fish farms have proved to be sustainable and it proves that it is um, important from the point of view of economic efficiency. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you uh, Ilya Vasilievich and uh, I'd like to give um, the floor to Christian uh, Tor Julensen, a Minister of Fisheries and Agriculture culture of Iceland. Iceland, on the one hand, is a large competitor on the fish market for Russia, but we have uh, had a long history of good partnership with Iceland. Uh, uh, the floor is yours, please. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is a great honor for me to attend the 2021 uh, Global Fishery Forum and Seafood Expo Russia and participate uh, in this plenary session with the topic impact of the pandemic, new challenges for the fisheries sector. The COVID pandemic affects all our, so all our societies and economic sectors. It is highly important that we are fully aware of the effects it has on the fishery sector and seafood markets and consider the best way forward. I'm sure we have all undertaken similar thinking in the past months as we try to analyze the situation and different aspects of the problems we are faced with. This includes identifying which problems are temporary and are resolved as we move beyond the pandemic and the problems which are likely to stay. The most difficult problems are the ones we knew before but got worse because of the pandemic. Another aspect is the different roles of governments and the sector itself. It is important to distinguish between the roles of governments and the fishery sector. Governments must manage the operative conditions and give support with the aim to leave sector as strong as possible once things become stable again. I would like to start by mentioning a few issues related to government op operations. Monitoring, control and enforcement, MCS, has proved problematically during the pandemic. Interaction between inspectors and crew members are risky under these difficult circumstances. The problems that have arisen will cause us to revisit plans 
to shift our focus towards electronic means of MCS and an ever greater emphasis on a better targeted MCS uh, utilizing risk assessment. This leads directly into the work of R RFMOs and coastal states. The pandemic has led to virtual meetings which have been useful as far as they go and some issues can just as easily be, de be dealt with through virtual meetings. However, all the types of discussions will be firmly cemented as face-to-face -face fora. We have experienced that complex disagreements are not most effectively resolved in virtual gatherings. In addition to this, many international meetings have been cancelled, postponed, or have had more limited agendas. Consequently, we have been building up a big to-do list that we will have to start to address when we, are, when we move beyond the pandemic. This will probably take some time. As for the sector itself, we have noticed that the main market issue caused by the pandemic seems to be changes in the consum consumption patterns. At the outset, there appeared to be something of a collapse in some markets, when de demand simply vanished almost overnight. However, creative minds of the sector came up with products which found their way to different markets. Some of the changes that the pandemic has caused will be resolved without the need for much targeted action when things return to normal. Others may require some interventions. Some changes may be for the better. We are therefore not faced with the simple situation of trying to go back to how things were. We must also look for the opportunities in the confusion. Government assistance has reduced the problems to some extent, and all the governments have adopted measures to help economies to get through the pandemic, fishery sector included. This involves uh, support measures for businesses as well as support measures for individuals. The pandemic has provided a textbook book of example of case where the government needs to step in during the uh, time of emergency. The arrangements might be different, but every country has this tune. In this context, I would like to emphasize an important point. It is vital that these support measures are considered temporary, but do not become permanent subsidies. Temporary relief must not become long-term support, since that would limit the long-term flexibility and adaptiveness of the sector and undermines the long-term success of the sector and the people who rely on it. Sometimes, as a wise man said, sometimes the road to hell is paved with good intentions. The seafood sector will always react quickly to changes. The pandemic has underlined that. In fact, the Icelandic sector seemed to have navigated somewhat safely through the rough waters last year, with the export value of seafood in 2020 roughly unchanged in Icelandic kronas from 2019, compared to about 75% uh, decrease in export earnings in the tourist industry. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, the public authorities must, uh, must ensure it is well understood that, uh, by the fishery sector that we expect the future of the sector to be one where it stands firmly on its own two feet and where the pandemic has not resulted in increases in government support or micromanagement. Fisheries must be sustainable from both an environmental and economic perspective if they are to contribute to the well-being of our societies. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. And as you don't have your earphone with interpreter, 
Let me thank you in English. Thank you very much for joining us and for sharing with us your views. Спасибо большое, господин министр. Thank you very much, dear minister, for sharing your opinion. Mr. Yulesson and Mr. Patrushev will have their mutual negotiations. Let's thank them for participating in the plenary session. Thank you for sharing your viewpoint and your stand. Thank you very much. And we continue and we'll go to the Faroe Island. Uh, so let us move to Faroe Islands and uh, statistically we can see that uh, Faroe Islands uh, uh, yeah your islands are like in th top three countries importing in Russia how do you manage to do that and what prospects do you see uh, in Russian for relations in fishery Faroe острова в топ-3 стран которые импортируют рыбную промышленность, рыбную продукцию в Россию. Cooperation with with Russia, uh, also on on trade, uh, uh, all the trademark. So uh, Russia is a very good partner for for our uh, fish products and uh, very good partner in the fish for the fishery management. Minister, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Firstly, I wish to extend my thanks to. Mr. Ilya Shestakov and the Federal Agency for Fisheries for inviting me to St. Petersburg. I'm also pleased to be able to attend this event in person, especially after this long period of social distancing. I believe events like this can, one can provide us with signs that life and business will return to normal again. However, a new normal will probably not be the same as we knew it, but in crises like this pandemic, we learn and we adapt to the new realities in business and in life. When we first learned about COVID-19, we thought that it may not affect the fair violence, not because we were already immune, but because often the fair violence are in many ways remote, isolated and difficult to reach. But we have learned uh, that today the world is more connected than ever and COVID-19 has also reached the uh, Pharaoh. Since the first cases of COVID-19 in March 2020, we have seen a number of surges bring up the number of COVID cases. But every time there has been a surge, the health authorities have quickly and effectively brought the situa situation back under control by using extensive testing, contact tracing, and by issuing public guidelines to restrict social events and other gatherings. Being a small country has some benefits in terms of managing COVID outbreak. This has mean that domestic life has almost continued at normal partly because of the relatively large testing capacity, but especially because of the people acceptance of the government's guidelines. However, the global effects of the pandemic still remain very evident for fairways businesses. Fairways export largely consists the fishing industry and the salmon farming industry. In recent years, the tourism industry has also become an important part of the Faroe's economy. But it's probably needless to say that the tourism industry has been hard hit because of the international travel restrictions. Fortunately, Faroe's people have traveled more in their own country than even before, and this has compensated many in the travel industry for otherwise lost income. In a similar way, the fishing industry has been 
resilient during the pandemic through diversification of their products and markets. When it comes to fishery industry, COVID-19 has not affected the productivity very much. The products were already used to strict demands. The, pro the producers were already used to strict demands regarding health and sanitation, and it was quite easy for them to adjust to new equipments and to implement new procedures to limit the risk of infection. Fisheries at sea have continued on a normal level, but the export of fish is decreased. This has led to some logistical challenges, both in terms of transporting fish to the buyers and in terms of storage space. The biggest effect on the fair fish export is that the traditional demand from catering industries, especially restaurants in Southern Europe and the sushi market in America and Asia has declined dramatically. For those exporting mainly to the restaurants and catering industry, it was very important to be able to change production quickly. Their response was to shift their production towards the growing demand from supermarkets. However, this production generates low profits, but at the very least, our production has not stopped. And we have not seen a significant rise in unemployment figures. But there have also been some positive effects, of course. Some companies have been able to optimize production cost, and the drop in oil price in 2020 did also benefit the fishing industry. It is still too early to say that the fishing industry has recovered from the pandemic or adapted to a new reality, but I sense an increased optimism in the industry now. As a fishery nation, we also have a responsibility to provide assistance to foreign fishing vessels that may need help. There have been some critical cases of COVID-19 where medical support from Paris has been required on board foreign fishing vessels. In this regard, I wish to stress that it is our priority that foreign vessels and their crew can safely operate in our water knowing that we will provide them with the appropriate assistance wherever it is needed. If a lesson is to be learned from this pandemic, I believe it is the importance of being able to diversify production to accommodate the market where the demand is. Good trade relations and access to various markets have been key to secure the resilience of various fishing sectors. And on this note, I wish to express my serious gratitude for the kind and beautiful relation between the Faroe Islands and the Russian Federation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Vladimir uh, uh, Vladimir uh, Olegovich, uh, it's a question for you. Mr. Vestergur has just uh, stated, and uh, that's the situation not only at the Faroe Islands. On one hand, uh, the catch is uh, growing, the production is growing. On the other hand, uh, there are issues with logistics. The produce doesn't make it to the consumers. And there is a new kind of disbalance uh, at uh, the fishing market. What will happen with that kind of disbalance? Will, will it still be growing or what? Thanks uh, for the question and uh, thanks for the opportunity to have my say. Esteemed uh, Andrei Vasilevich and uh, Mr. Shostakov, Ilya, dear colleagues, uh, friends, dear participants of the forum, it's a great honor and a pleasure at the same time to take part in this uh, happening. And uh, I am uh, happy to present uh, Food and Agricultural uh, Organization. 
and I would like to uh, pass my best regards uh, from our Director General, Mr. Fandergur, and uh, of course I will share my impression from the Forum and Expo. And it's not just paying compliment to you, but it's a, it's a true fact of life, because the exposition that is being happening over here is quite impressive, both by content uh, and by the scale. And uh, we can learn a lot uh, from the Expo, and I would like to congratulate you and uh, the idea to unite the exposition where, where we see the results with the forum where the issues could be discussed and where we can give answers to the question is a good practice. And uh, I'm absolutely happy that uh, it's uh, a tradition and it is supported by the Ministry of uh, Fishery Industry in Russia. Of course, uh, fish is uh, one of uh, the biggest uh, commodity fishery and uh, aquaculture is uh, creating jobs and uh, it uh, supports livelihood of millions of people and we've been noting that uh, fishery is uh, supposed to be instrumental in achieving the sustainable development goals for the period till 2030 much depends on how the situation will be in the fishery industry globally. To answer your question, Stanislav, still coming to it, and uh, I will answer it, uh, I must say that despite the success, and uh, our organization is responsible for uh, work against uh, hunger for food security, and uh, despite the success in pre-COVID years uh, to overcome hunger, the pandemic set us back. In this good uh, course, the number of uh, the hungry has grown by 161 million people, and it is 811 million. And of course, uh, it's, it cannot be tolerated in our world. We should uh, work hand in hand. Every one in 10 people are suffering from hunger, and the others are uh, suffering from the lack of vitamins or from uh, excessive weight. And one billion cannot uh, afford a well-balanced uh, nutrition. That's uh, the background that we are working against. So to overcome hunger by 2030, concerted efforts are needed. And we uh, rely much hope on the contribution that uh, could be made by uh, the fishing industry. Far estimating that uh, the fish products will be growing, but uh, 11.2 and 1.2 and uh, aquaculture 2% by 2027 the products of aquaculture could exceed the catch of the fish the fish consumption by 2030 will be 21 and 2 kgs versus 20 kgs now it is also important because we are fighting hunger hunger against adapting to the climate change and uh, against the attempts to, uh, to stop climate change. We are fighting for the preservation of biodiversity and the fishery industry could be quite helpful because it uh, does not, uh, it is uh, much uh, cost uh, intensive to overcome uh, the climate change. And the food security is uh, very important, uh, and uh, FAO is in char uh, uh, are leading the fight. Uh, the fishery industry is much affected, and I've uh, taken the report of uh, FAO. You can get hold of it uh, at uh, the at our stand, and uh, thank you for accommodating this stand. The fishery industry was hard hit more than the others. And uh, that's why I am so overjoyed to see the demonstration of the achievements that the Russian Federation is showing. And one of the biggest difficulties was the disruption of the chains, of uh, the supply chain, chains of custody, value chains. And uh, this is uh, the issue that affects not only such large, expansive countries as Russia, but uh, small fishing industries and the, the 
catches uh, stops uh, stop uh, fishing and uh, we have studied uh, the dynamics and how to recover the production how to give a chance uh, to keep uh, catching and uh, keep working with the aquaculture uh, FAO has uh, set up a target uh, group to coordinate uh, the efforts of the member states uh, to mitigate uh, the effects of the pandemic we have uh, provided the analytics uh, the intelligence we've been monitoring the situation providing the technical support to the individual uh, facilities and uh, countries and uh, we have been developing the joint measures together with our partners the Russian Federation is a reliable partner of, uh, of the FAO in this work. Its uh, fishery industry provides uh, products uh, for not only the population of uh, Russia, but uh, exporting it to other countries. Russia is a leading uh, player in the global fishery industry. Mr. Shestakov has been talking about the situation and prospects of the development of the fishery industry in Russia and uh, the prospects are realistic and uh, the prospects are bright and uh, we share the these uh, prospects and the forecast and uh, i would like uh, to refer to what mr patrushev said about uh, the r and d and uh, uh, FAO platform is accessible to you. Please uh, take it to FAO platform and uh, we will be prepared uh, to share it as best practices globally. And uh, supporting the agreement uh, on measures uh, to prevent illegitimate uh, fishing. We uh, uh, loud and applaud the efforts uh, in, taken in Russia and thanks uh, to the legislators of supporting this uh, important uh, global initiative. There was a reference made uh, to trade in fish and uh, Stanislav, uh, that's the question that Stanislav, the moderator, asked. And uh, we should have a multilateral approach. And uh, that's uh, the idea I've been playing wi with. Why not invite uh, the leading uh, body of uh, FAO on uh, trade and uh, have uh, a session, a workshop jointly and with your forum. It uh, could be held in 2023 and we can discuss this issue. Of course, uh, 2023 is still still two, year, two years uh, away, but uh, we can start the groundwork to prepare it. In conclusion, once again, I would like uh, to express my gratitude uh, to the Federal Agency on Fisheries uh, for the opportunity given to us uh, to present uh, the FAO materials uh, at the stands uh, for the multiple meetings at the margins uh, of uh, the forum, which are very important indeed, and for the opportunity to have uh, three sessions under the auspices of FAO to consider the agenda of the forum issues. Thanks once again. It's a great pleasure for me. Thank you. But uh, about the disbalance, uh, Mr. Derek, uh, the um, Maritime Stewardship Council, on the eve of our happening, sometime before the forums, uh, has uh, certified the new fishing grounds, have, has certified the new fishing grounds at Kamchatka. And uh, many uh, know what uh, the issues uh, are the industry at Kamchatka is facing because of the difficulties of selling Pollock to China. The, that kind of disruptions and the gaps, uh, how, long, how long do they last? So you have certified the new fishing grounds, but uh, should they start catching fish there or not? So, um, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to ask, answer his question first, um, but not um, before I first say a big thanks to the organizers to invite the Marine Stewardship Council here today. Um, it's, it's great to be back. Um, and so, Your Excellencies and ladies and gentlemen, um, I'm going to reflect on the global demand for sustainable seafood, and I will come back to your question on um, Alaska uh, or Russian Pollock and how that certification of Pollock in the global market is important and also for East Kamchatka. 
Um, so over the five minutes or so that I have, I'll first reflect and zoom out on the global situation um, where we see that the fundamentals have not materially changed despite the COVID pandemic. If my presentation can come back, then I hope you can see it as well. Is my presentation there? Oh, I'm not much further than I thought I was. There we are. Okay, so as I said, the, the global fundamentals that uh, we as MSC operate in and the global seafood industry operates in is still pretty much there. 18 months ago, some 2.4 billion people on the planet were dependent on the seafood industry as their prime source of protein and that hasn't fundamentally changed. Some 60 million people around the globe are dependent on fishing and aquaculture operations as their prime source of income and if you add other services and industries in the supply chain, boat building, net making, financing, science, perhaps up to 500 million people around the globe depend on the seafood industry. And that is all underpinned by natural resources and healthy ecosystems that provide these jobs and these economic opportunities. Another reality that unfortunately hasn't changed very much over the past 18 months is this graph that you, sh that you see here, which is something I took from the Food and Agriculture Organization State of Aquaculture and Fisheries report that they published in June of 2020 in the middle of the pandemic. And it shows the number of fish stocks for which they receive data that are classified as either overfished, fully exploited or overexploited. And the yellow part in this graph shows the proportion of stocks that is considered to be in an overfished state. And that has grown to 34%. And the trend, as we can see, is not good. That hasn't changed, but it does need to change. We are in a world where we're heading towards perhaps 10 billion people in 2050, and we simply need to use the resources that we have more smartly. Now, the good news is there are solutions for that. We know where we want to go. We have the Global Sustainable Development Goals ratified by 193 states in end 2015. And Sustainable Development Goal number 14 specifically relates to life below the water, where states committed themselves to rebuild stocks to levels where maximum sustainable yield can be produced, to eradicate illegal, unregulated fishing, and to ensure harmful subsidies are ended. The United Nations also said that collaboration is fundamental between public sectors that are the natural stewards of the resources, they are setting the harvest control rules, they are issuing the licenses, they do control the fisheries, but it's important to collaborate with science, with the private sector, and it recognized that international, global, credible certification systems can help governments and private sector to demonstrate progress against the goals. And MSE was specifically mentioned as an example in relation to SDG 14. Now, coming back to COVID-19 then, in this context of a transition that needs to happen, um, it definitely did create a lot of disruption. We've heard about whole markets falling away, specifically the food service market where fresh seafood was consumed. It did close overnight. Restaurants, hotel chains, the airline industry, events, it fell away, and it required fisheries around the world to be very resourceful in changing how they processed and what products they would produce and export. Um, we've heard about the logistical challenges and the, and the additional border controls and the times that that takes and the closure of the Chinese market. It is a tremendous challenge for the, the logistical challenge for the fishing industry. But in many places, we've nevertheless seen very strong, resilient answers and creative minds that came up with solutions and managed to find markets for their seafood. As MSC, in the pandemic, we did a global research amongst consumers, how they think about seafood and sustainability, how they think about the eco-label. Actually, sustainability is more at the forefront of consumers' minds. It's more important than ever in our poll. The recognition of the label has gone up between 2018 and 2020. And markets, retail markets, um, they are actually demanding more food and seafood as well. And that creates new opportunities for some seafood producers. So as MSC, many of the, the fisheries in the world that work with our program, now some 15% of the global fisheries meets our standard, 
they've actually also found solutions despite the challenges that the COVID pandemic confronted them with. Specifically in Russia, um, maybe also against all the odds in this difficult time, we have seen the fastest growth across all countries. This graph shows the number of units of certification in the MSc program in Russia over time. And you see in 2020 and 2021, the relative and absolute growth has been astounding. Fisheries for cold water prawns in the Barents Sea, for crabs in the Barents Sea, Pacific cod halibut in the Far East, Greenland halibut in the Barents Sea, and a whole string of salmon and pollock fisheries now meet the MSC standard, bringing the proportion of wild catch from Russia in the MSC program to 45%. And that's really testament to a strong scientific basis for the management of fisheries in Russia, solid controls, and overall, it's a real achievement and demonstration that Russia is making incredible progress to be compliant fully with the aspirations of the Sustainable Development Goals. So I really want to congratulate all the stakeholders with that. Coming back specifically to, to the East Kamchatka um, um, question, why is now uh, more Pollock than ever certified in Russia? I think it does relate to an overall market demand for seafood sustainability documentation. The MSC provides a solution for that. Um, Russia has a, has a very well-organized industry that said together we can actually demonstrate we meet the standard and cater to the demand for sustainability documentation and we can be attractive for international markets relative to the competition from other countries because we have a good management system. So I think that's the fundamental driver here. Um, and on that note, I want to thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Ingebrigtsen, I've uh, had a look at the statistics and um, I see that in Norway, in spite of all the difficulties, last year was uh, one of the record high years, and uh, this uh, August uh, uh, has also set a record uh, indicator. I understand that you have the report that you have prepared for this plenary session, but we would like to understand your vision, this growth of uh, uh, the catch. Uh, do you face some challenges and problems uh, uh, with um, the um, uh, output on the market? And how do you resolve those issues? And do you see a significant problem there in the logistics? Uh, I'd like to specify that it is about logistical problems. Uh, first, first of all, I, I would say that um, working in the fisheries industry is working with the future. We can look forward, and we know um, all of us uh, that um, uh, the world's population are growing, and all of them need food. I will come back to the, your question during my speech. First of all, <coughs> dear ministers, Guests, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for the invitation to um, attend this session. It's a great pleasure to be here in beautiful St. Petersburg. The COVID <coughs> pandemic has impacted the fisheries industry in many ways. Both our advantage is that we are used to dramatic changes. Changes in weather, in quotas, in regulations, and in the markets, and all part of every day in the fisheries industries. That is why we have been able to adapt quickly and find new solutions. Since the start of the pandemic, we have uh, had many different challenges. Supply chains, disruption on a large scale, delay in um, shipbuilding, maintenance and <coughs> repairs. We have uh, reduced uh, shipping capacity and container, container shortage with big price hikes and long delays. We see falling prices for many products. And uh, 
As an example, the price of uh, cod was reduced with uh, all, around 30% from March 2020 to March 21. Other products were hit uh, even harder as hotels and restaurants closed down all over the world. Difficulties with crew changes and lack of uh, specialized workers because of closing borders and COVID protocols. Uncertainty of food safety. So, all parts of the fishing fisheries industry has been hit by the pandemic. But even with very demanding circumstances, we have been um, able to harvest and produce seafood almost as usual. People need to eat, also during a pandemic. As countries went uh, into lockdown and uh, restaurants closed, the seafood demand was still strong, but unpredictable. Demand of, uh, the demand of frozen products has been sourcing. And the fishermen have been able to meet the demand. We are still in a pandemic. We have uh, learned many lessons, and we're still adapting to new conditions. From our experience, one of the key learning points is that the quick communication and short lines of decision making have been extremely important. Daily brief and exchange of information has been necessary to solve the different challenges we have. The Norwegian Fishermen Association have worked closely with the government and other organizations, monitoring the situation and discussing different measures. This has helped us keeping the business running. As for international cooperation and close border have been the biggest obstacle. Many issues have been discussed and solved on digital platforms the last year and a half. But to have a good international cooperation, it is very important that we can meet in person. This is my first trip to Russia with almost three years, and it fe feels very good to be back. Physically meeting and are important and continue the mutual development within fisheries. So what about the new normal after the pandemic? For sure, we have to confirm that the seafood industry is both flexible and innovating. I am sure that the industry will handle the new challenges, and I am hopeful that the pandemic has increasing the demand for healthy seafood around the world. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, but I'd like to find out uh, about the disbalance. Sorry, I'm getting back to this topic. Probably you can comment on that. Uh, we'd like to understand uh, your vision. How long will the situation uh, be like this, like we see now with um, the fishermen, the experts to China. It has become more complicated, to put it mildly, and we have to think how we should rechannel the fish, what has to be done in terms of logistics, do we have to invest into containers for shipbuilders, do they have to invest into container transportation, or in six months the containers will be uh, quite affordable and not very expensive. Well, I'm frankly 
hope that our industry and our uh, sector has uh, found and has adopted a new approach due to the situation with pandemic and the disruption in the export to China and we will not go back to the old rail so to say if uh, China opens up but uh, we ask ourselves a question this sector why our partners and colleagues have introduced uh, such strict uh, restrictions because our feedstock was uh, used there to build the sector of uh, processing industry and uh, now um, they um, face this shortage of the feedstock and it is a serious uh, loss uh, for uh, them and there are different viewpoints why they have done it for which reason and uh, probably they are looking for 100,000 uh, tons of uh, uh, pollock and to get new conditions and new terms from us but I hope that uh, the current uh, situation will uh, remain like this and uh, it will uh, give us positive uh, uh, results and uh, it will mean that we have chosen uh, the right policy working with this end market. Uh, yesterday we have uh, we had a meeting with uh, our Norwegian colleagues and um, um, they depend on European markets and Poland, they have processing capacity and um, it would be uh, great to put forward uh, this idea where you catch the fish, it is better to process it uh, um, right there and it will um, give this country um, uh, ad an added value and uh, this pandemic will uh, provide uh, this direction for the development of uh, the sector and the industry and in spite of the complicated uh, conditions it will provide some positive uh, uh, results as well mr ingebrigtsen would you like to respond uh, to respond to that is it possible to process it there because we are at the crossroads in russia what do we have to invest into uh, recently um, uh, an agreement has has uh, been signed to expand logistics at the Eastern uh, Economic Forum for shipping the fish and the seafood for transportation. Will we need that 52 billion? Will we have to, inst uh, to invest it? Uh, will we have to uh, ship it, uh, ship the fish or process it right there? Yes, I am. Um Oh, yeah, I think so, it's uh, necessary. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, um, I think it's very necessary for uh, you to invest um, in, in the DAS uh, processing industry. And we have the same time of um, uh, discussion in, in Norway. We need to process more in, inside Norway. And um, uh, as I said from, um, <coughs> in my speech, uh, that is uh, fisheries or the future, and that the world need food. And uh, if we have good process, uh, processing industry, it, it, it will be a good investment. And um, of course, uh, you need to, um, to transport the fish. Then we have the same time uh, uh, of discussion in, in Norway, but um, uh, container is a very good way to transport it. Yes, I think. Yes, but containers uh, have become uh, more expensive, like uh, an increase of seven times. Yes, but, um, uh, it's very necessary for us to um, keep the quality on the fish. And this, if we can keep it, for instance, uh, frozen, uh, uh, forward into the to, uh, the to the industry to the they come near the industry, you will manage to, to keep the quality of the fish and that's very necessary for the market. And the market is so on that you have to um, work with it every day. You have to speak with them, what, are they, uh, what they, they want and, uh, and so on. So uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a daily work.
Давайте на сцену пригласим человека, который просто Let's invite to come onto the stage a person who makes um, the decision what to invest into. Uh, Bank has been investing a lot into agriculture in uh, general and to the fishery as well. Miss Irina Zhachkina, first deputy chairman of the board. So what would you like to invest into? What would you like to purchase? Uh, good afternoon, dear colleagues. Uh, when we start speaking about about investments, you uh, uh, understand that you have to talk to the banks. And uh, as uh, Ilya Vasilievich has mentioned, and other colleagues as well, we as uh, Ross Silhos uh, Bank, we have uh, a good expertise. We have been uh, working for a long period of time with clients from agriculture and the fishery. Uh, we quite positively view the development of the fishery uh, complex. And for us, we identify the prospects of uh, investment for the future. The bank is um, thinking about the return of investment. It is uh, the most uh, well-balanced approach for any investor and uh, risks when we estimate a project in the conservative way. So we are the most conservative uh, participants of any process and we adopt more conservative approach than any investor and we see the following prospects and the growth of uh, consumption in Russia and uh, around the world and the prospects of investing into uh, certain areas, a processing that has been mentioned a lot uh, at uh, the uh, plenary session both on the coast and at sea, the development of logistic uh, infrastructure, what has been mentioned about uh, the port facilities and containers, their production of aquaculture that is uh, uh, growing f faster than any other sectors and areas, taken into consideration the following fact, I will talk a little bit more about aquaculture uh, later, and also building uh, the fleet as an example of uh, the cooperation that we used to have with China to 2020, experts um, chi uh, from China, and we exported non-processed uh, uh, product, and our appetite for investment in uh, processing in order to retain uh, the uh, margin and to increase the profitability for Russian manufacturers about 70 billion rubles. According to our investment, we are ready to increase up to 80% of the catch into the increase of processing facilities. First of all, it is the production and manufacturing of fillet and uh, ready-made uh, uh, products. Also, uh, when we talk about the development of aquaculture, we see a disbalance in the consumption of uh, uh, fish, uh, th uh, six uh, uh, kilos from Buratia and a lot more um, in other regions. And uneven uh, consumption that uh, we see is linked to the characteristics of uh, logistics and the investment into uh, logistics uh, infrastructure structures, uh, uh, cold uh, capacities and special uh, fleet and the appetite for uh, this investment about uh, 80 billion rubles. So, another territorial disbalance. It's uh, about the consumption of uh, disbalance of consumption that uh, it was mentioned. And, uh, one of the drivers of the growth of consumption are the produce of aquaculture. We welcome the growth rate that we witness in the aquaculture industry. It is 14 percent, as it was mentioned, though the fish output growth is between 2 and 3 percent. Another advantage of aquaculture are economical versus the other sectors of agriculture like poultry or fish and 1.5 kgs of forage gives 1.5 of fish and in poultry it is 2 kgs of feed produce 1 kg of poultry uh, and in cattle the ratio of is 6 so Economically, 
aquaculture with less investments uh, could uh, provide a higher output. And uh, it calls for uh, less uh, production capacity because uh, the conversion ratio, uh, feed conversion ratio is uh, higher. And uh, 60 billion uh, uh, rubles are expected to be invested into aquaculture in the near future till 2025. In the next five years, the uh, demand uh, for investment in the fishery are 50 billion rubles, and uh, uh, Rosselhoz Bank uh, will be an active uh, player to support uh, the projects of the Russian business. And uh, consequently, the classical instruments of the banks uh, will be used. And uh, that's why I'm thankful to the colleagues for giving me a chance uh, to speak uh, at the forum and uh, outline that uh, we believe in the prospects. Uh, and uh, let's uh, now give floor to the region where the aquaculture is developing vigorously in the Arkhangelsk uh, region. Despite uh, there is uh, a coastal area, the aquaculture is d developing. So you are both farming and catching. So how do you view the prospects of the fishery industry and uh, where do you play? Uh, place an emphasis on when thinking about the strategical development of the region. Thanks, uh, Stanislavs, and uh, I will use uh, my microphone from this seat and uh, to answer the question. All the reports uh, were highly professional related to the fishery industry, and uh, I am from the administration. I would like to thank uh, the Ross Rybolovsta Federal Agency and the Ministry for the chance uh, to for this uh, for the chance for this uh, event to materialize because the, it was uh, postponed put forward repeatedly and uh, talking about uh, the development and uh, I meant uh, to thank uh, for the unusual format of the hosting the event uh, because uh, the virtual to remote conference wa is a more uh, accustomed uh, format. Physically here we can uh, have a discussion and uh, talk about our opportunities and our Kangelsk this uh, year has uh, staged a stand over here. Traditionally we have one stand for all the facilities. If you allow a few words uh, on the impact of the pandemic, that's the subject matter of our plenary session. The fishing industry for Arkhangelsk uh, is uh, a part of the cultural code. It is a part of the regional identity and uh, self-perception. The poor more uh, people have been engaged in fishing being the carriers of the fishing technologies. So fishing is heart and blood of the poor more citizens. So that's why it is important for us, not from the point of economy, but a part of the identity, as I have said. In the past year, despite the pandemic, we have quite good results. More than 180 entities are involved in the industry. 16 are oceanic facility. One of the trawlers uh, was uh, in the Barents uh, uh, Sea, and uh, the Arkhangelsk uh, trawler fleet is doing well. More than uh, 3,000 tons uh, have been caught. Uh, another trawler will uh, go out to the deep in November. And uh, of course, the decisions were taken earlier, but uh, these are the results of the operation in the pandemic year. 
and uh, there is uh, a processing facility in Arkhangelsk uh, that uh, were started uh, operations uh, in 2020 as uh, part uh, of the investments uh, quota mechanism. And uh, today, the availability of the processing facilities uh, on shore though they are not uh, competing with uh, the others uh, are good and uh, this uh, particular facility is uh, operating at 100% of its uh, design capacity you can uh, you're welcome to visit it another risk that we have faced there were pandemic limitations and uh, we have been developing the human resources uh, strategy and uh, we have uh, registered uh, the shortage of uh, the highly qualified uh, human resources because the qualifications in the industry are getting higher and uh, we uh, realized uh, that uh, if one person uh, is infected aboard the ship, uh, it uh, calls uh, for the replacement substitution of the whole crew. And uh, that's why we have uh, taken a decision which was uh, pending. It's uh, about uh, the fishery college in Arkhangelsk. I would like to thank the Ministry of Education and Science that have supported us. And this uh, particular college was on the brink uh, of uh, closure, but uh, the pandemic and understanding that we are facing the shortage of human resources encouraged us uh, to take a decision to retain it and include it into the Federal Arctic uh, University. We have uh, allocated the uh, first, first uh, 50 million rubles to fund it. And uh, at the moment, uh, it is a vocational school, but uh, we have taken a decision already to turn it uh, into the higher school of uh, fishing and technologies. And uh, the license will be uh, acquired and it will be a higher educational establishment to uh, train uh, staff and de de uh, develop uh, capacity for the fishery industry. And uh, so uh, please uh, look into uh, it. Uh, and uh, I would like uh, to the Ministry of, uh, I would like to request uh, the Federal Agency for Fishery uh, to rely upon it to train personnel. And uh, it's good and uh, thanks. Uh, that the northern filial of Vniro, it is the R&D Institute of the Fishery Industry, and uh, it, it is uh, the basic for uh, the Arctic uh, studies. And uh, uh, we uh, count on all these uh, factors in uh, unison. We have a cluster the Arctic uh, fishery cluster and uh, there is a road uh, map adopted uh, till the period of 2025 one will uh, be the repair and maintenance center and uh, in the Arkhangelsk port and we will keep uh, developing the competencies another Besides uh, the repair and uh, maintenance, it is uh, harvesting the marine mammals and uh, we are cooperating with the Norwegian colleagues and on the 27th of September we will have a scientific uh, conference and uh, another one is developing pasture aquaculture. A few pieces of statistics in 2017 was 100,000 ton, and uh, we expect 270,000 tons of uh, products. And uh, we are supporting the whole range of aquaculture projects, and uh, we expect there will be more people coming into the industry. Thanks, Mr. Governor. And uh, we are aware that you will have uh, to have a meeting. We can excuse me. And uh, thanks for taking part in the plenary session. 
and uh, we will continue. I would like to thank you. I would like to thank uh, the participants of the plenary session. All the talks were interesting, and it gives uh, food for thought uh, for future cooperation. And uh, I wish you success, and uh, I wish uh, the forum and uh, expo will keep developing. And uh, let us uh, continue. Alexei, the buzzword Pollock was mentioned several times. I would like uh, to have a vision of what will be happening. And I know that uh, you are debating the issue in the industry and trying to forecast, to predict uh, where should the investments go, whether it is uh, offshore or onshore. And of course, the, if it is done at the sea, the profitability would be higher. What will happen with the China market? Will, it, will the China be open? Or whether you will steep, uh, still have to work uh, as you're doing now using containers? So what will be the new normalcy next year? Thanks, uh, Stanislav. Good afternoon, dear participants. Any discussion about uh, fish, one way or another, ends or starts with the pollock. I thought it uh, ends uh, with the sauna or bath. Uh, bath. Uh. No, not that. Um, uh, let me give you a few figures on pollock, because it uh, looks like we are running out of uh, time. It's uh, the export from Russia by 80% uh, and uh, it's four times over taking it to China and uh, the supplies are very slow. It's not only refrigerated uh, containers uh, and uh, the new coronavirus logistics uh, has increased the logistics uh, expenses to China by 2.5 times and uh, uh, logistics expenses to Europe has increased by six or seven times. And uh, of course, that's why the profits are lost. The enterprises are looking for new markets. Uh, and a lot of Pollock uh, is uh, consumed uh, domestically. And uh, the uh, processing uh, facilities uh, are producing in depth. and. Uh, that's uh, uh, why the in-depth uh, processing has grown by 34 percent. We estimate that the losses of the Pollock uh, sector has uh, lost as a result of the prices loss and the excessive additional uh, logistics uh, costs uh, and anti-COVID measures are 260 million USD, quite big. So it is uh, obvious that the crisis will change the Pollock landscape in the industry. And uh, not uh, all the Chinese uh, processing in industry enterprises survive, especially it is uh, SME. They will have uh, to go elsewhere. And uh, uh, the uh, Pollock. Uh, will go to the southeast, to the other nations of Southeast Asia, where the labor is still cheap. What about us? Uh, uh, there, there will be new uh, vessels with the at sea processing, new uh, processing facility on shore, which will be able to handle 40% of uh, Pollock. And, uh, with the, there are prospects of a 50 by 50 ratio, 50 processed at sea and 50 onshore. And these uh, two segments uh, will complement one another. Processing at sea will make it possible uh, uh, to uh, capitalize uh, on uh, uh, the uh, investments uh, and uh, the processing at shore will uh, be the center of attraction for the development of uh, the agriculture, uh, uh, refrigerating depots and refrigerated storage. And uh, it uh, would uh, make it uh, possible to uh, have more output that cannot be produced uh, at sea. When do you think the, the decision will be taken 
on investment uh, quotas. The final decision will be when uh, the president signs the law. But uh, I think after the elections uh, into the state uh, Duma, the legislators uh, will uh, come up with the initiative. What's your final proposals? Because uh, I think it's up to your final proposals. We have been uh, putting it out. We have been stating that it is necessary to invest both uh, into the vessels, ships, and onshore facilities, uh, so we will support uh, both. And uh, it refers to the Far East, and uh, I think uh, we will uh, achieve uh, the 80 percent uh, renewal of the facilities uh, in the Arctic, in the north, and uh, we should develop the Far East infrastructure as well. It's one of the priorities. And, uh, Alexei has come up with an interesting uh, word uh, com combination, like uh, the word combination coronavirus logistics. Uh, it's a, a new word that is coiled. Everything is uh, coronavirus related. Let's talk about uh, coronavirus money. Let's uh, invite uh, Vladimir Sedov from Sberbank. Uh, will you please uh, have you are given the floor. You can make use the rostrum. Well, what about you? How would you invest uh, your money? Not your money, but Sberbank, of course. Thanks. Yes, so we are interested in taking part in that kind of discussion. We have invested 250 billion rubles, both into the shipbuilding and uh, processing facilities, and we'll be, we'll be following the logics of our investors. If the priority is given to the shipbuilding, and the, 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 that's what we will be doing. If uh, the priority is given to the processing facilities, we will do that. Of course, the profitability rates uh, in uh, the fishing are quite high, but uh, there are certain risks that the investment uh, projects are facing. It stands to reason that uh, uh, the bulk uh, of uh, the shipbuilding faces delay. It, uh, of course, uh, endanger the investments uh, scheme that uh, was uh, made in 2020. We viewed this uh, program as a multi-billion investment project. Uh, but uh, uh, using the money in two th between 2017 and 2019 uh, resulted in the delays with the projects. But the good news is that our shipbuilders, manufacturers are becoming more and more uh, professional. And um, uh, we have a series of new vessels that are being currently built. And um, it will be a serial. Uh, manufacturing and um, it will help us make progress and I'm quite confident that uh, in future we will see the redistribution of quarters and the subsequent uh, transformation uh, and it will uh, help us to renew the fleet both uh, uh, in other regions and in the Far East and uh, we are quite positive about the investment appeal and we will continue our uh, full-scale uh, funding into those two areas. Thank you very much and uh, summing up our discussion, uh, I'd like to ask a question to Ilya Vasilievich, the concluding question. So we spoke about coronavirus logistics, coronavirus breeding, coronavirus fishing. So what do you think in 2022, will we fully adapt to this new normal and uh, this is the way we will uh, live uh, or we will uh, still go back to the old style of uh, living. I can't uh, say in general, but as for uh, the fishery industry, I think we have adjusted, we have adapted to these conditions. And I think that uh, the most complicated times are over. 2022 will be easier and we will adjust to any uh, small changes that will probably happen. So. 
together with the, the representatives of the banking industry, we are quite optimistic about the development of the fishery industry. It is nice to do that uh, together with the bankers. Thank you, dear ladies and gentlemen, for joining our plenary session. I'd like to thank the speakers for expressing their viewpoints about the fishery complex. Thank you very much again. Уважаемые участники, уважаемые участники, приглашаем вас на кофе-брейк. В 14.00 мы продолжаем деловую программу мероприятия.